This slide is a copy of a painting done from memory in 1914 by Thaddeus J. Patton. In it can be seen on the left Brian Mackey's store at the foot of the hill, as well as G. B. Avery's and Brian Mackey's wharves and warehouses. Mr. Avery was Mr. Patton's brother-in-law. Nearby stands Mr. Mackey's hotel. To the right on the waterfront is the original lighthouse and its keeper's dwelling. The Hudson Bay Company building is also in the picture. The Hudson Bay Company building was used by a number of families before burning down in 1942. This plaque indicates the approximate location of the historic building near the credit union. By water or over the ice were the means of keeping in touch with the outside world. The following pictures show a few of the vessels of the time. This photo was taken in 1874 on the occasion of the vice regal visit of Lord Dufferin. This slide shows a more close-up shot of the steamer Chikara. It had some trouble at the border at Sault Ste. Marie, since during the Civil War it had been a blockade runner to the Confederate States of America. The Asia foundered in September 1882 on the Georgian Bay en route to Manitoulin. Over a hundred souls on board, only two survived. A woman named Christy Morrison and a Manitoulin man called Dunk Tinkus. His family built the Mansion House Hotel where the Anchor Inn now stands. A song was composed about the tragedy. The first of many verses goes, A hundred souls she had on board, and stormy was the day when the Asia left the harbor to cross the Georgian Bay. Residents of Little Current complained that Captain Campbell blew the Pacific steam whistle at hours when they were trying to sleep. The right, north side of Water Street is underwater in the early 1880s. By the late 1880s, the north side of Water Street has expanded with stores and warehouses erected on docks. The same location in 2016. This picture was taken from the Campbell Street Hill. The same location in 2016. The three buildings are left to right, the Mansion House Hotel, Ritchie's Store, and the Queen's Hotel at the intersection of Water, Worthington, and Robinson Streets in 1889. This is the only house of worship in Little Current that never burned down.
The old Ferguson house opposite the manor. Mr. Ferguson came to Little Current to work for Charles Anderson. The latter founded the Red Mill in the 1880s. The old house was torn down several years ago and a new one built in its place. The Old Jail Building on Campbell Street. It is one of the oldest structures in town that is still being used. Mr. Turner was the founder of the retail business that still bears his name. This mill was one of the two largest ones in the Little Current area. In 1890, the residents of Little Current applied to the provincial government to be incorporated as a town, apart from its parent township, Howland. The first clerk of the town Dave McGilvery also served as clerk of Howland. These hunters are, from left to right, Fred Forshoe, John Hasty, Thomas Batman, William, and Robert Morfitt. It was popular in the 1890s for the well-off to purchase bicycles of the modern design. They were too expensive for those of more modest income. The individuals in the picture are, from left to right, Marjorie English, Mrs. M. McGrath, Miss Trotter, Aylesworth, Mrs. R. English, Miss Sadie McFarlane, Major, Mrs. Adam Trotter, Mr. W. L. Trotter, Miss Bell Collins, Mrs. Mike Gone, and Dan Detweiler, clerk in the store. This picture was taken in front of Trotter's store in Chiguenda. The Alligator was a versatile watercraft for the timber business. It was a shallow draft, and the winch at the bow allowed it to move over short portages, literally towing itself. The original uh, public school for Little Current had two rooms, but it had two extra rooms added to it in the 1890s. It burned down in 1942. This slide shows the footprint of the old school at the highway maintenance property on Worthington Street. One of the last things Charles Anderson did was to build the Methodist Church Mance in the 1890s. It was demolished a few years ago. Now the minister must seek his own or her own accommodations. This slide shows the little current post office when it was operated by Mr. Isaac Turner. In the early part of winter, when the ice was thin, the mail and light freight came over the North Channel from the railroad station at Massey. This photo shows the Picnic Island Sawmill during its busy days around the turn of the 20th century. It ceased operations at about the beginning of World War I. There were residents and a boarding house on the island. To the left in the picture can be seen the floating bridge that connected the island to Manitoulin. The two stately homes belong to the Turner and Dawson families. The house to the right was later to be the site of a youth center in the 1960s. 
The Turner House has remained in the family for well over a century. It was built by Charles Anderson at the end of the 1880s and been in the Turner family ever since. The town had a brass band and musical ensembles in its early days. This slide shows Water Street with docks and other structures on its north side. The ship leaving the docks was known as the Baltic, formerly the Francis Smith. It was built in Owen Sound in the 1860s and burned in Collingwood in the mid-1890s. The Majestic was hailed as the ultimate in passenger freighters when it first visited Little Current. It even had electric lights, something the town lacked in the 1890s. These ruins can be visited on the southern portion of Low Island below the Centennial Manor. It was a major sawmill in the Georgian Bay North Channel area. American owners from Michigan acquired the old red mill at the turn of the 20th century and renovated and modernized it with such features as electric lights, a pressurized water system, as well as extensive docks. The elevated structures were tramways where teams pulled carts of lumber from the mill to the docks. The horses had periods of rest and relaxation on a farm just outside town. A stream actually made an island of Low Island in those days. The long house at the upper right was the Red Mill boarding house for employees. It is now the site of the Centennial Manor. This slide shows a lumber carrier at the Red Mill docks. The lumber was piled high and casual laborers loaded it onto ships. A lot of the lumber was exported to the USA. This dock was built a few years ago as part of the recreation facilities at Low Island Park. The original Red Mill docks lined the whole western shore of Low Island, often referred to in olden times as Red Mill Island. These lumber piles are on the north side of Picnic Island where the water is quite deep. The logs for both the Red and Picnic Island mills were floated to their destination in huge rafts. The remains of one of the Picnic Island Mill buildings as seen from the land side.
For many years, the town and the whole of Manitoulin had no bank. The Merchants Bank came to Little Current in 1902. The bank building survived a couple of fires that engulfed and destroyed hotels located a mere few meters away. The Merchants Bank was absorbed by the Bank of Montreal when it ran into financial difficulties in the early 1920s. One of the nearby fires occurred when the Huron House Hotel burned to the ground in 1949. At that time, it was known as the Manitoulin House Hotel. The original bank building was located about where the present bank's front lawn is. This view of Water Street from the Campbell Street Hill shows a large four-story white building uh, to the left of the picture. It was known as the Nixon House and burned down in 1906. That was the first time the bank narrowly escaped disaster. The Huron House Hotel was built on the site of the Nixon House Hotel. The windmills on the dock pumped water to a few residents and businesses. This photo, taken about 1910, shows the two-part Huron House Hotel. The back part was designed to be a summer hotel to accommodate tourists. These centennial homes were built and lived in by Jane Bryden, Brian Mackey's daughter, Robert Maltus and family, and Dr. John Carruthers and family. Several members of Parliament and the Ontario Legislature lived in the Carruthers House. This slide was taken about 1905. The buildings adjacent to the Nixon House were stables for guests' horses. It was presumed that the fire that destroyed the hotel in 1906 started when a careless person threw a cigar butt onto some straw. One of the biggest fires in the downtown business block occurred in 1907. The business buildings were of frame construction and burned like tinder. The town's firefighting equipment was unreliable and inadequate. Fortunately, for the west side of the business block, on the south side of the street, the wind was in the right direction and so the western part was spared until another devastating fire consumed it in 1910. After the 1907 fire, the town passed a rigorous bylaw requiring buildings in the business area to be of non-flammable materials and certain items, such as gunpowder, were not to be stored on the premises. None of the buildings erected according to the rules of that bylaw have been destroyed by fire. This picture, looking west on Water Street, about 1910, shows the new fire-resistant building materials used in the reconstruction of the eastern part of South Water Street. By 1910, Little Current's main street was being supplied with electric power from the Red Mills Dynamo. This picture of the business section, taken about 1903, amply illustrates the frame construction used downtown before the 1907 bylaw required fire-resistant building materials. This photo, taken in 2016, shows the placement of electric wires underground as part of the 1990s Pride Main Street renovations. The provincial government sponsored the program.
the three churches in the picture, only Holy Trinity Anglican has never been destroyed by fire. The Methodist Church burned in 1907 and again in the late 1920s. By then, it had become the United Church. In both instances, the church was rebuilt on the same site. At the extreme right in the photo can be seen a dredge. Dredging of the channel at Little Current went on for a century. Before trains and trucks, boats served as a means of transportation for both passengers and freight. Captain Cleland, whose wife was the former Nellie Dawson, is seen on his boat with her and daughter Betty. Another boat serving Little Current and Eastern Manitoulin was Sims Mailboat Iroquois. Besides mail, it carried freight and passengers. The Iroquois before extra straight rooms were installed at the stern of the vent vessel. On occasion, a raft of logs would jam the channel at Little Current. Ships would be bottled up in port as seen in this photo. Improvised entertainment would be arranged to amuse the unexpected guest. The Iroquois is the ship in the foreground. This picture shows the extra staterooms at the stern of the Iroquois. Cutler was one of the ports on the north side of the North Channel that were used by the mailboat to link up with the railway. The Germanic was one of a number of passenger freighters to bring and take mail, passengers, and freight to and from Little Current and other island ports. The mail was, in the early days, shared by both the steamboats and local mailboats. The old lighthouse on Water Street is seen in the middle of the picture, and a boat livery is to the west of it. After the Iroquois foundered in 1908, the Sims brothers obtained the Bonami to replace it. shows a working sailboat at the west end of the Little Current Harbor. As the 20th century came along, 
steam and sail were challenged by the new gasoline-powered engines, as illustrated in this picture of one at the Centennial Museum. Some of the affluent began using the horseless carriage as the new century passed by. In this photo, Mr. Harold F. Ritchie, an entrepreneur extraordinaire, is seen with his mother in Toronto. The native of Little Current brought his automobile of magnificent proportions to Little Current to show his friends. In winter, travel depended on the good old-fashioned horse and sleigh. The mansion house is now the anchor inn and scene in the background. In this photo at the same spot, the team will be pulling a covered sleigh. One can see the small chimney at the top. The mail stage was of the same style and went from Little Current to Massey over the ice. Modern means of communications came to Little Current in the early 1890s when the telephone and telegraph arrived. Lines were soon extended all over Manitoulin. Exchanges, like the one in the picture, served until the second half of the 20th century. Ritchie's Bakery and Store was situated where the TD Bank is now. At one time, Ritchie's produced up to 700 loaves of bread a day and supplied tugs and steamboats. One senior in town described Ritchie's bread as the best you ever tasted. This picture of Ritchie's store shows the addition of the Ritchie Hall, where council met at one time and a schoolroom was once located. Mr. R. R. Gammy was one of the most controversial members of the legislature that Manitoulin ever had. He died in 1917, just before the war ended. In his time, some Torontonians described Manitouliners as Gammylanders. For years, Manitoulin people pleaded for a land link to the outside. It was finally achieved when the Algoma Eastern Railway built the swing bridge and sent over the first train in November of 1913. The rail line went from Little Current to Sudbury. The Algoma Eastern Railroad did not go far onto Manitoulin. The station and freight shed were near where the water treatment building is now. A number of Little Current residents braved the chilly wind to honor the Swing Bridge's centennial in 2013. The main commercial use of the railway was to transport coal from the dock in Little Current to the smelters in Sudbury. Since war began in the summer of 1914, the railway and coal hoist were vital for the Allied cause. 
In those days, the sound of industry reverberated throughout the town. The coal dock and railroad became a major source of employment. A multitude of lake freighters like this one brought in coal from the U.S. ports. Occasionally, spontaneous combustion would cause fire to break out in the coal piles. In 1913, the Red Mill informed the town that it would no longer be supplying electric power to Little Current. As a result, the town built its own steam-powered generating plant on East Water Street. In this slide, a self-onloader is depositing coal for the plant. The cost per kilowatt hour was frightfully expensive, even in today's money. Two passenger freighters that served Little Current and Manitoulin Island from the turn of the 20th century to the 1940s, the Caribou and the Manitou. This stately home was built in 1913 by one of the town's successful merchants, Mr. Oliver Vincent. His daughter, Audie Wardrobe, lived there until the early 1950s. It is now the OPP Depot. A third floor was added to the venerable Queen's Hotel in 1911. It burned down during World War I. The major world event in the second decade of the 20th century was the Great War. In this photo, volunteers are waiting to board a steamboat for the Sioux to take their medical tests. Schoolgirls gave the volunteers bouquets. This photo shows the same place 101 years later. The next few pictures show some weapons of World War I. They are on display at the Imperial War Museum in London, England. To build up Esprit de Corps, the 227th Battalion commissioned a battalion song called Men of the North. The 119th and 227th Battalions were made up of soldiers from Manitoulin and the North Shore.
After the war, the Every Woman's Club in town contracted and paid for a memorial to the fallen soldiers. This field on North Merida Street was used to drill soldiers in 1916. The largest building in the background was the Baptist Church. It is now part of a grocery store. The same site in 2016. This frame building, where the laundromat is, was one of the few buildings of frame construction that hasn't burned down. In former years, the Orangemen's Parade on the Glorious Twelfth was celebrated on Manitoulin towns until after the midpoint of the 20th century. It was virtually a national holiday on Manitoulin and in many other parts of Ontario. This photo shows the remains of the last of the big fires in the downtown core. While the south side of Water Street had burned in 1907 and 1910, the north side remained until 1919. Its wooden buildings went like tinder. This photo shows North Water Street before the 1919 fire. After the 1919 fire, the federal government purchased 300 feet of waterfront for a public dock. It was completed in 1921 in time for the visit of the Governor General, the Duke of Devonshire, on Lumber Baron James Playfair's yacht Pathfinder. The Duke had time to visit some of the scenic spots near town. In the photo from left to right, military attache Captain Balfour, Mayor George Baxter, Governor General the Duke of Devonshire, Marchioness Hartington, Marquis Hartington, and W. L. Trotter of Chagwinda. The Own Sound Transportation Company acquired the SS Manitoulin in the late 1920s. It is here seen in the Little Current Harbor with Goat Island coal docks in the background. The Manitoulin had formerly been known as the Majeska and was a cruise boat on Lake Ontario. It was altered before being used on the Georgian Bay and North Channel, given many more cabins. In this photo, the Manitoulin is at the government dock in Little Current. The little cove in the foreground was subsequently filled in. The customs office is the nearest building on the dock. When the federal government built the new dock in 1921, they also constructed a customs office and warehouse on the dock. This photo, taken about 1927, shows the new dock, customs office, and warehouse from the air. In 2002, the town acquired all the federal docks in Little Current. The government supplied money for rebuilding and modernization, which took place in the early 21st century. 
The town began placing finger docks along the main dock to accommodate more pleasure craft. One of the old style lumber or pulpwood boats, the Edward Buckley, it foundered west of Picnic Island in 1929. Commercial sailing vessels continue to visit Little Current well into the 20th century. Unless the captain was very skilled or very daring, his vessel would be towed through the harbor as in this picture. And this photo shows the rock cut for the railroad going into the Little Current train station. It was susceptible to build up of snow. In this 2016 photo, the rock cut has been overgrown with brush. Although the railroad provided a land link to the outside, the public desired a road link as motor cars and trucks became more and more plentiful. The result was the slow construction of a highway to Espanola between 1921 and 1930. An outstanding priest, beloved by all, Father Eugene Pafno, S.J., served at St. Bernard's Parish in town from 1911 until he died in 1931. He traveled far and wide. His buggy is shown in the next slide. It is located at the Centennial Museum in Shagwin. Automobiles were for summer travel. When the going got tough, the teams got going. Wilkinson's Resort was located at the first ferry dock on La Cloche Island. After the Soldiers' War Memorial was built, the Every Woman's Club proceeded to erect the band shell. It was built of similar material and replaced an earlier wooden structure.
Little current ratepayers were loath to spend on expensive public works, including schools. Besides elementary grades, the board offered early forms of high school in a continuation school held at the old Presbyterian Church on Campbell Street. When it burned to the ground in the mid-1920s, the town was forced to construct a new one on Blake Street. In a similar situation as shown in this picture, Premier Hepburn's seaplane was almost crushed in 1937. It was reported that the high boo was improperly loaded, listed, and while turning, capsized. Captain Norman McKay was one of the casualties. Some of the large cruise ships passed through the harbor but did not stop, alleging that a north wind would prevent them from leaving the dock. The Hiawatha was altered and used for a few years as a ferry across the channel at Little Current. It was not suitable as a ferry and generated a lot of complaints. The dock for the ferry on the Little Current side of the channel was on the western part of Water Street. Loading and unloading vehicles was difficult. The Hiawatha was owned by Mr. Norman Trotter. This slide shows all that is left of the original ferry dock. To accommodate vehicular traffic to and from the original ferry dock, the town requested and got permission from the province to make an upper and lower level on Water Street. The old mailboat Vaughn Ami was sold and renamed Islet Prince and used briefly as South Bay Mouse Tobermory Ferry. Despite the depression, many affluent tourists continued to visit Manitoulin in the 1930s. For those without their own yachts, a Great Lakes voyage could be booked on a cruise ship like the SS Georgian or the the North American seen here at the Little Current Dock with the launch Fedora 2 and Ferry Jacqueline in 1944 or 1945. The faithful old Manitoulin on its way from Owen Sound to the Sioux. The Killarney mailboat Albatross in a snug cove. It took mail as well as some freight and passengers from Little Current to Killarney during the navigation season. After the Jacqueline was retired in 1945 when motor traffic began using the swing bridge, the OPP subsequently acquired the dock space as a boathouse for the police boat Manitou built in Killarney in 1952. The OPP boathouse was torn down in 2015 and the space became part of the town docks.
This building was originally a fish hatchery. It was built in 1932 and was a source of employment in that grim depression year. The decrepit old hatchery was demolished in 2015. Despite depression conditions, some well-off tourists, some with summer homes in the region, came up in luxurious yachts or seaplanes. This seaplane is coming in for a landing, if you can call it that. The dredge deepening and widening the channel is conspicuous to the left in the photo. This picture illustrates the presence of shoals in the channel at Little Current. The old curling rink was built at the beginning of the 1930s. Captain Robert Graham, a local lumberman, contributed in a major way to its construction. Just east of the curling rink, the Latter-day Saints congregation built a church a few years after the rink was completed. Both buildings were on property that once had been the site of a Presbyterian church, also used as a school until consumed by fire in the mid-1920s. The curling rink served its purpose until the new one was built in the mid-1970s. It was later used as a storage facility. The old Latter-day Saint Church was converted to a physical training center and remained thus until after the fire in 2014. Although it doesn't look badly damaged, the old church building was sufficiently affected by the nearby blaze that it had to be demolished. During the 1930s, Little Current contracted with John Deagle to provide the town with electricity. Previously, the town generated its own power. Later, Ontario Hydro provided electricity from power generated at Kagawong. The tanker trucks of the 1920s and 30s seemed pretty modest in size by today's standards. There were all dirt roads on Manitoulin that were muddy in the springtime. Arguably the most active and one of the oldest organizations in town is the Lions Club. This photo records its formation in 1938. Curling is a sport that has been played in Little Currents since the turn of the 20th century.
at one time on open air rinks. The winning members of this champion rink are Captain Robert Graham, Joe Parks, Walter Granville, and Jack Marshall. One of the most publicized and dramatic accidents occurring in Manitoulin waters was the drowning in, the 19, in 1938 of one of the Dodge family heirs, Danny. He fell out of his speedboat, Mac. No expense was spared by the Dodge family in attempting to recover his body. They brought in a family aircraft. And this submersible. The day the latter arrived, two men from town found the body floating near Honora. They claimed an handsome reward the family had offered. Danny married a local girl from Gore Bay just weeks before the mishap. The old road to the ferry dock can be seen going across Go Island. This small freighter carried loads of pulpwood and other commodities in the 1940s and for many years before. It was built in Michigan in 1889. The coal freighter at the Goat Island dock is a self-unloader, relatively rare at the time. To the right is the conveyor used to load silica stone from the Shagwinda quarry. The stone was stockpiled on what is now Turner Park. This is the site where the stone was stockpiled. The conveyor belt took it over the top of Water Street to the freighters. The launch Fedora 2 was owned by the operators of the Barren Island Fishery Station. In the 1940s, it was bought by William Boyle and used to take out anglers and for other purposes as well. This slide shows Mr. Tom Boyder at the wheel of the fedora. This photo shows Dr. Bailey, Dr. Henry, Howard Wilkinson, Dr. Myatt, and Cam Speck in the late 40s or early 1950s. The ferry Jacqueline was scow-like in shape and carried six or eight vehicles across the channel from Goat Island to Little Current. On this slide, it is possible to see the small hotel on Goat Island, called the Little Ocean House. This picture shows the Norile. It was not usually seen at Little Current, 
It served as the Tobermurray South Bay Mouth Car Ferry. The Jacqueline slip on the dock is empty. The Jacqueline was retired in late 1945 when motor traffic began using the swing bridge. Some of the large CPR cruise ships, such as the Manitoba, passed through port without stopping. This private yacht, built originally for Horace Dodge in 1921, was one of the largest on the Great Lakes and probably the most expensive at $2 million when it was built. The yacht, called the Delphine, was 258 feet long and came in at 1,342 tons. It was a regular visitor to Manitoulin and carried a crew of 22. It is still afloat and can be chartered for a tidy fortune. Wilkinson's Resort on La Cloche Island was located at the original ferry dock. In 1937, the ferry docks were changed to Goat Island and downtown Little Current. The Manitoulin House was across Water Street from the dock on the town side. This slide shows the Manitoulin House Hotel and the Bank of Montreal, formerly the Merchants Bank. The owner of the hotel, Mr. W. C. Boyle, is in the middle of the three brothers. The old fire hall and town office were on the corner of Meredith and Worthington Streets. The new fire hall is on the same site now. One of the most harrowing wartime experiences was suffered by Nurse Kay Christie, who arrived with the Canadian troops at Hong Kong just before the Japanese invaded. She was a prisoner of war until an exchange of prisoners was arranged. Canada became an arsenal for the Allies during World War II, producing vehicles, ships, ammunition, and a lot of other military equipment. This minesweeper was built in Canada for the Royal Navy. It was adopted by Manitoulin, and various gifts were sent to the crew from local residents. This U.S. Coast Guard ship carried President Roosevelt's retinue during his fishing visit to McGregor Bay in 1943. The President himself came in his private railway car. This picture shows the expositor's staff in the early 1940s. At that time, the expositor office was on the first floor of Turner Hall on Robinson Street. 
After its small building on the dock burned down, Farquhar's Dairy was relocated to this site at Campbell Street and Manitowani Road. Little Current's first real hospital was in the former Sims home on Meredith Street. The building was purchased by the Sisters of St. Joseph in 1945. The old Sims house was demolished in the early 1980s and this wing of the hospital was erected on the site. After the old public elementary school burned down in 1940, a new one was built near the secondary school on Blake Street. When the first wave of baby boomers came to school age, it necessitated another boom, the construction of more classrooms in the early 1950s. Between 1913 and 1949, the Manitoulin District was under the Canada Temperance Act, which prohibited the sale of alcoholic beverages. Beginning in 1944, there was an annual cattle sale held in Little Current in the early fall of each year. After a lot of lobbying, Little Current got its new post office in 1950. At that time, there was an apartment for the caretaker on the second floor. Because of the pressure on school space in the early 1950s, part of the building was used as a classroom. Waterworks and Little Current were installed in the early 1950s. A water pump house and chlorination facility was constructed close to where the town electric generating building had stood from 1913 to 1930. The old pump house was converted to a base for a replica of the town's lighthouse on Water Street of earlier times. The local OPP acquired their first watercraft in the early 1950s. Ontario Hydro expanded service during the 1950s. The work required a boat so that remote, remote locations could be reached. That first vessel was called the Nana Bush. For decades, a huge anchor was in place on the waterfront, a real landmark. When the sale of the old anchor to Judge Marks became known, a host of protest letters condemning counsel were featured in the expositor.
When attendance fell to unsustainable levels, the separate school in town closed and eventually was acquired by the town and used as a municipal office and library in 1980. In the 1950s, large crowds attended to see local hockey and baseball teams play. The Norisle at its ferry dock at South Bay Mouth. Loading and unloading cars or trucks at Tower Murray and South Bay Mouth was quite daunting, but crew members would help if nervous motorists requested it. Since the coal dock opened in 1914 until the early 1980s, coal freighters traveled the channel at Little Current. The Owensound Transportation Company's uh, crews and freight vessels made regular calls at Little Current until the 1970s. When the Norgoma and Norrell were no longer needed, the former was moored at the Sioux and the latter at Manitowning. The pellet loader at the coal dock conveyed iron ore pellets from Sudbury onto Great Lakes freighters. Passenger rail service to Little Current ended in March 1963. The train which was heralded with such enthusiasm in 1913 had lasted 50 years. Cargo trains, of course, continued for another couple of decades. After a lot of wrangling over the site, government officials settled it and Little Current became location for Manitoulin's home for the aged. The first of the rent geared to income apartments in Little Current were built in town in the 1970s and called the Channel View Apartments. A new Bank of Montreal was built immediately east of the original building. Until the 1980s, most municipal roads in town were of the gravel variety. One of the new church buildings in town was the Grace Bible Church on Draper Street. It was built in the late 1960s and early 70s. A Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses was erected in 1971. This Algoma Central Lake freighter was one of the last coal boats to visit Little Current. Over the years, the waterfront experienced high and low water levels. One of the high water marks occurred in the fall of 1986. To make the docks accessible to pleasure craft passengers and crew, on several occasions, decks were built on top of the docks. 
In the autumn of 1986, even the decks were awash. The two largest marinas at Little Current, Boyles Marine to the left, is privately run. The Spider Bay Marina seen at the top right corner was built in the early 1980s and is operated by the municipality. This photo of Spider Bay Marina shows water at more normal levels. Spider Bay Marina looking west. The popularity of Spider Bay Marina necessitated the construction of an additional washroom. The Spider Bay Marina was originally designated the Little Current Marina, but boaters confused it with the town docks.